Hello and welcome to this Robocraft 2 guide about how to set up logic for your flying robot in Robocraft 2. This guide is intermediate level and what I mean by that is I won't explain really any basics at all as you already need to know quite a bit about how to build in Robocraft 2 to have use for this guide. This guide will be divided in two parts. The first part will treat left and right steering as well as backward thrusters and how to handle that logic as CPU efficiently as possible as well as some tips and tricks on how you can balance your robots in terms of central lift for the anti-gravity cubes and uh, center of thrust so that it stays balanced in the air. The second part of this guide will deal with how you set up a smooth hover function for your flying robots so that you don't need to stay or be stuck up in the sky all the time. Uh, but can go close to the ground. This is really useful both to avoid enemy fire and go into buildings to shoot at crystals. I will talk in detail about how the input works for the anti-gravity cubes as well as how outputs work from sensors and how you link those together with logic to achieve this kind of hovering. So I will just start by uh, removing all the logic here. There we go. Now this one is pretty much dead in the water. If we load it into the test zone you can't really do much with it. Um, so to start with we need to connect up the anti-grav cubes and power them up. Uh, one easy way to do this, you could actually do it without any logic, you just connect any of the places on your pilot seat directly to an anti-grav cube. Uh, that's, this is one of them. I will actually open up uh, the roof of this one later to show a bit about the layout for the cubes uh, to show how you can balance your robot. But uh, for now, let's just connect it like this. Uh, if you do it like this, just directly connect it to the cube. Um, if you would push down or hold down the key in question, in this case the space bar, uh, you would power up the cube. So I could just go ahead and like connect every one of my cubes uh, this way, right? And you could fly this way. I Personally, I prefer to be able to toggle flight on and off. So I much rather use a bit. Uh, so let's grab one of those and um, connect the toggle to the key I would like to use for toggle flight on and off and then connect this one to the different cubes. So let's do that. All the thrusters are actually on right now. That's because we haven't connected them yet and unconnected thrusters, the, the default state is they're on blasting, right? Uh, so we'll worry about that later. Uh, but we can control elevation thanks to being able to power up the anti grab cubes. So now it's time to add the logic for steering. Now there's different ways you can actually have steering on a flying robot in Robocraft 2. The way I'm going to show is extremely CPU efficient because you're pretty much just using the thrusters that are sitting there anyway to move forward um, and a very little bit of logic uh, circuits. So very little CPU. There's the other ways are, for example, with gyroscopes. Uh, there's also some glitchy ways to do this that they hopefully patch quite soon. This is early alpha after all, so there's, there are bound to be some bugs, right? Uh, but this way is completely legal, it's, it's not something that will be, be patched because it's just using intended behavior and we're using the stuff that's already sitting there. So what we'll need is two different logical cubes. We need an adder block and a subtractor block. The way the adder block works is very simple, it takes input A and then it adds input B. So if you have plus one here, you have uh, plus one here, output will be two. If you have one here, minus one here then output would be zero, right? And the subtractor block, kind of the same way, but just subtract, so input one here, uh, input minus one here, for example, then output will be zero. And the way we want to connect these are to the pilot seat, uh, forward to input A on both of these, and the left, right to input B. After that, we are going to connect the output of the other block to all our left hand side forward facing thrusters. We are going to wait with the backwards facing ones for now. So let's do that. And from the subtractor block, we do the same to the right hand side. The thrusters are now turned off because they're actually connected to logic. 
and will only activate when we tell them to. Uh, the forward trusses that we have not yet connected uh, will still be on, of course. If we go up in the air, we can now control forward, even though these thrusters on the front, come on camera, these thrusters on the front will actually slow us down a bit, but yeah, that's a later problem. Uh, we can control the direction by pressing left and right. So I will turn by pretty much just turn on all the thrusters on one side and turn them off on the other. Uh, so we now have pretty much full control of our vehicle, except moving backward. And of course a little bit inefficient to have these on all the time, like pushing us back. So now let's solve that. I should credit Artesia who posted this very CPU efficient solution on the Robocraft 2 Discord in a thread I made about tank steering for wheels. Uh, I had another solution that used a lot more CPU, so this is way better, so I started to use that instead. And if you want to know exactly how it works and why it works and not just how to connect stuff, I will post a little table here that hopefully explains something. It's also pretty much a direct copy-paste of a table that Artisha posted explaining this. So let's solve the backwards facing thrusters. For that we need a side mat block that change or flip the output. So if it's a positive output, it ends up being a negative output on the other side. We need two of these. We're going to connect uh, the output from this one up here, output from this one up here, and the output from here to this side's uh, forward facing thrusters, and the output from, uh, let's see, this to the other forward facing thruster. For this adaptation, I don't really need to credit Artisha because it's my personal adaptation because the thread where we discussed this was about wheels and tank steering on wheels that's just I adapted it for flight uh, but now this little neat addition if we turn right and left and we can look from the front instead you can see here that this thruster turns on here so when the ones in the back on the right hand side or sorry uh, on the left hand side are on the one on the right hand side here or like the up opposite side will be on and actually help with the rotation so we'll now rotate faster uh, they are not on when we're going forward and if we press backwards they're on to actually move us backwards so now we got that solved my next video in this series will show how you add a hover functionality uh, to go very low like I mentioned in the beginning of this video but before we end the video I want to show the insides of this robot and how you can build in order to uh, kind of manage um, the balance of the robot if you front heavy or back heavy compared to, to your center of trust and center of mass. So the way I do it is often like give myself a little possibility to tweak the robot towards the end. So I want my anti-grab tubes, at least a few of them to be e easy to access. So here, if I remove two plates, I actually got a few of them here. And I actually left a little room here. So what I can do if I feel the robot is a bit front heavy when I like towards the end of construction I can just remove two cubes and I could just take these ones cut them out and then reposition them to alter the center so like if I would move them back here I would provide greater lift towards the back and it's like a, you could accomplish the same thing here by for example switching so let's say you wanted to have greater lift in the back, instead of moving these, you could just nerf these ones a bit. But if you nerf the power from these ones, that means you wouldn't use them to their fullest potential, which means if you can use them to their fullest potential, you will actually be able to change the elevation a lot faster than if you try to balance your robot by, by simply like nerfing the power output. So it's a better way to do it. So when you construct a flying robot, my advice is just put them like in a space where you can just alter like the position a bit. I have two more that are positioned on the lower layers. So they're not easy to get to, but being able to alter the position of four of these cubes is more than enough. All right, so that's how you can change like the center of lift. Uh, you also, it's very advisable to try to have a lot of your anti grab cubes high up in your robot because that will mean it stays upright. If you have like if you have them at or below the center of weight, it will be very unsteady. Uh, so this is like tip number one, right? The next thing you need to balance is center of thrust. 
uh, you kind of want an even center of truss so, so you have as much weight above uh, the trust as below see so for example if I would position most of my truss thrusters on the top of my robot it would continuously push it down so I wouldn't use it efficiently to move forward uh, but of course when you start a robot unless you have made a lot of similar robots before you don't know exactly how it will turn out and where center of mass will be uh, so it's good to also give yourself the possibility to change where the center of trust is a bit towards the end just like with the power output that you can nerf to balance the robot it's not good to do that you should balance it instead um, for these ones you can of course do the same to these ones but it's just not using it to the fullest not using the full um, power of the thrusters which means you're wasting CPU wasting thrust so it's much better if you can balance it one way would be to add a little bit of extra space here I don't have much but add a little bit of extra space to move the thrusters up and down a bit and adjust uh, depending if you see like that the nose is pushing down a bit you can move the thrusters a bit down to adjust for that another way especially if you have a forward facing gun like this is that so much of the total weight is sitting in especially the aiming servos or aiming hinges that I used here so by just moving the gun up and down a bit if you have it front facing uh, will actually change the center weight on the robot so that's another way to adjust it so that was my tips in regards to how you balance your robot Hope you found this guide useful. Uh, the second part of this guide will be up in a few days, at least I hope so. I have most of the stuff recorded already. Uh, if you watch this video somewhere in the future, I will have put uh, these two parts in a playlist, so it should be quite easy to find the continuation of this guide. Uh, you can always like and subscribe, it helps me grow the channel. Cheers!